Well, we're up to 144 people. 100, so we're getting there's Carly. We're getting yeah, there. it looks like a lot of people are, are joining. Um, I apologize again for the delay, but we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Um, so uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome to today's Safe Water webinar. Um, we're going to be going over a lot of information today. We're going to crash the biofilm party. Um, so a couple of disclosures before we start. Kelly, Mike, and myself are all uh, full-time employees of ProEdge Dental Water Labs. Um, and without further ado, I want to introduce you to the star of our show, Kelly T. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> I, I wouldn't go as far as saying star, but thank you very much, Carly. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm Kelly T. I'm Kelly Timmis. Um, AKA Kelly T because we have a Kelly B that works here. Uh, we also have two mics. So if you have the same, if, if, if we, we like to hire people with the same name here, so I, I guess you can say, uh, but yeah, super excited to be excited or to be here with you guys. Uh, again, sorry for the delay in getting started. Um, we appreciate you taking time out of your, your day to get to, to be here with us. Um, kind of jump right into it to, uh, to introduce who I have with me. Um, we got Carly Frampton. She's a safe water expert. She helps offices all day, every day, uh, like I do. We get to work with um, offices through, all throughout the nation uh, and in Canada uh, to help them uh, establish and maintain a safe water protocol for their office. And then we have Mike Rust, who has uh, been with ProEdge for, for several years. He's just, man, when you think of, of water lines, uh, or you mentioned Pro Edge, most people, most people think of Mike. So um, these are so I'm so excited to introduce these two uh, and all the the team members here at Pro Edge. We uh, we love what we do. We love helping offices, and so uh, excited to to get this going for you today. Um, the main objectives that we want to kind of to jump into, and Carly can kind of attest to this, that uh, you know working with offices throughout the week. Um, we've truly become women on a mission and Mike, a man on a mission to, to help offices establish and maintain a safe water protocol for their office. And that's what the main thing we want to do today. We want to, we want to not only help you to establish that, we want it to, to tell you why, why is it important? Um, and so we want to go over that and also want to help you do it effectively and efficiently. Um, but the main thing that we want to do and the primary focus uh, that we want to let you know, no matter what realm of dentistry that you're in, we want to let you know how much we appreciate or appreciate you from all of us at ProEdge to, to all of you. Thank you. Um, we see you. Uh, we know how hard it must be uh, coming back, getting back to work after COVID. Uh, I saw this picture on LinkedIn and man, it just really, it just really hit home for me. Um, this is this is the same office, of course, pre-COVID, and then uh, now after with all the PPE and the uh, the garb that you guys have to wear to keep yourself, your patients, um, and your practice safe. So, man, I it's hard for me to wear a mask going into the store and going into other places, and so this looks so uncomfortable. And so, man, we thank you guys so much for for doing that for us. We sit in your chairs every six months. So we really, really appreciate every, sing every single thing that you do to keep us to keep us safe um, as patients, but all the patients that you do and yourself and your practice. Yeah, right. You're right, Kelly. Uh, all of us from ProEdge, not just the three um, here that you see here today, but all from all of us at ProEdge, we, we really appreciate you. Um, so quickly, let's go over a laundry list for what this course entails. Each of you will be able to um, receive one live CE credit through CE Zoom. Um, super exciting. We do have a gift at the end, so stick around for that. Um, this uh, webinar will be recorded and available on YouTube, so you can always go back and, and refer to the recording. If you have any questions throughout, jot them down on a piece of paper. At the end, we're going to do a Q&A, get all of your questions answered. Um, and, and really, uh, one hour is never enough. Dental unit water lines is really a crazy topic and there's a lot that goes into it. So um, one hour is never enough. If you ever have any questions um, after today, you can always give us a call anytime and you'll most likely speak to Kelly or myself, but we're, we're happy to, to get to know your practice and, and really answer any questions that you might have. Um, so Kelly, for those that are new to the biofilm party, can you tell us exactly what we're talking about here? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and this may be basic for, for a lot of you or most of you, or, or it may not be. We get this call a lot um, because it's, you know, and for me before working here, um, I would go into my dental office and I'd see all these, all these lines and I had no idea that the difference. And so we want you to know what, what water lines we are talking about before we really take, you know, dig deeper. And so we are talking about the water lines or that of the water that's going into your patient's mouth. So your air water syringe line, your handpiece lines, your uh, scalar cavitron lines, the, the lines that put water into your patient's mouth, not the evacuation lines, your suction lines, nothing like that. Um, just those lines. So we just want, again, maybe basic, but we wanted to just make sure before we dig in, you know what lines we're talking about. Also, um, we wanted to go over, we're gonna be talking about these three, uh, these three things in detail. And so we wanted to just kind of touch base on what they are before we dig any deeper. Um, the first one is shocking. Uh, and what is shocking? Shocking is using a strong chemical to clean out the insides of those water lines. So the inside of your air water syringe line, your handpiece line, your cavitron line, those lines. That's what shocking is. And you will hear us say that word a lot throughout this, several, several times. Uh, the second thing is treatment or treating. And that's using a low level antimicrobial. So like tablets or straws um, to maintain lines uh, that you get clean with shocking. And then the third thing is testing. And that's just your verification that you meet or exceed the CDC guidelines, which is that you just have to be at drinking water standard. Um, and we'll go again, we'll go into that in detail uh, later, but we wanted to just let you know, we're going to talk about these three steps, the three steps of safe water in detail throughout. So just wanted to kind of touch base as to what these were before we, we, we dug in. So speaking of CDC guidelines, um, Mike, do you want to tell us the most re recent um, recommendations that came out from the CDC? Sure. We, I'm sure a lot of you have gone to the CDC website a lot throughout COVID, and we were checking it every week early on to get the latest in the interim guidance that they were given. Um, but and, and it hasn't really changed. I think it was updated a month or so ago. Um, and, it's, and you can just Google uh, CDC guidance for dental settings. And you can see what the latest is, but they say, you know, dental unit water lines, test your water before expanding, prior to expanding dental care practices, right? So we should have tested our water by now. If you haven't, now's a great time to do it. Uh, it's never, you know, it's easy to get started. Uh, they say confer with the manufacturer of your dental unit to follow their instructions for how to treat the water, how often to test. And in the absence of that, you know, you want to you want to be conservative and make sure you're you're safe. And the way to do that is to test your water lines, treat as need, shock as needed, and then choose your favorite treatment uh, to make it a to, you know a protocol basically. Make a protocol that makes sense for you and your practice. But um, most of the bugs that grow in dental unit water lines are non-pathogenic, but um, some of these, a few of them, are pretty nasty. That, that, that can grow in delicate water lines, right, Carly? Yeah, so, and, and really, um, I'm sure pretty much all of your practices have already opened up from the COVID closures. Um, but this is just a really quick um, kind of review and just a, a reminder of the unique situation that COVID caused for dental unit water lines. Um, so again, as we all know, COVID led to these closures or shutdowns. These shutdowns led to stagnation. Um, you know, your lines were just sitting there for so long, not being used. So that stagnation leads to uh, bacteria growth and biofilm development, and that creates the perfect bacteria or perfect environment for bacteria or pathogenic bacteria. So again, we're not necessarily worried that um, COVID nineteen is going to grow in your water lines. Um, we're just worried about pathogens like Mycobacterium abscessus, Pseudomonas, and, and Legionella. Um, so again, COVID-19, the situation that it created, really reminds us that um, stagnation is, is a big problem. Um, and there's really, it's, there's no way to really get around that. You just got to follow these three steps and we'll, we're going to go over more detail. Um, but, you know, bacteria in dental unit you know, water lines has been called dentistry's dirty little secret for a long time now. Kelly, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so it's not something that that's new. You know, COVID did definitely bring an awareness uh, kind of around bacteria, around viruses, 
uh, we're all washing our hands and doing more stuff now than, than we have, right? Or, you know, maybe some of us uh, more than, than others, but it's, it's been dentistry's, a dentistry's dirty little secret for, for some time. Mike, can you touch more about when that, that story came out when it first launched? 2016, we got a call and we got pretty intimately involved with the Anaheim case. We learned about the case in Atlanta as well. Yeah, it's a, you know, we know it's a secret and this, you know, I've been through lectures where smart people uh, were uh, showed these toilet slides and talked about how toilet water has been compared to, to dental unit water lines. And I, and if you're like me and you have no life and too much time <laughs> on your hands and access to a lab, you can test your toilet water. So we did. And we tested the water in our Brita pitcher filter, which I use to make my tea every morning. But, and the Brita filter, the water out of the Brita filter is not as good as the water in the tank of the toilet. But of course we do, I boiled it before I made my tea, just saying. So it, <laughs> after, it, after you boil it, it was really good. And it tastes good too. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, but bacteria is a problem. And, um, Tell, Carly, tell us why. Yeah, so, um, I mean, yeah, we know that bacteria is a problem, especially in dental unit water lines, um, but let's kind of talk about the why. Why should we be so concerned about that? Um, and really this, this main story that we're gonna talk about is of Mimi Morales and Kelly T, uh, you're great at um, explaining the story. Why don't you help us out here? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I, I'm, uh, I love starting with the why. I think the why is super important because I know with infection control, um, I, was, I was a nurse for several years prior to coming on board here at ProAge, and um, there's so much in the realm of in, in infection control. And when you think of dental, dental unit water contamination, um, it's, it's easy to overlook it, and it's easy to not humanize it. And so really, that's what we want to do, because it really is a, a pro, it can get pe people sick just like it got this sweet little girl sick. So this is Mimi Morales, and she is just one of the, the many faces of the why behind dental water line maintenance. And so she is, was a seven-year-old little girl who went in for a routine pulpotomy in um, Anaheim. Uh, so she was just one of the children infected in the Anaheim outbreak that, that Mike was kind of talking about, developed a severe infection in her mouth. She had to have several permanent teeth removed, part of her jawbone, I believe her grandma um, said a quote, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but she said that the doctor removed as much bone of her jawbone as possible without disfiguring her. So that in itself is just is just heart wrenching. Um, you know, this this sweet little girl went in to get you know a, a pulpotomy, and now she she has lifelong side effects. Um, she, and she's not alone. There were there were several others. She was hospitalized for more than a month. Um, and had to receive heavy, heavy doses of some heavy duty antibiotics. And guys, we're not just talking about um, amoxicillin or penicillin or just the antibiotics that we take or that we give our children. Um, we're talking about an antibiotic that was created to treat leprosy, um, which in itself comes with lifelong side effects. So not only does she have to deal with not having permanent teeth, but also uh, the, the side effects from, from the cure. So that is, that is uh, definitely the reason um, of, of the why. And Mike, you, I know you kind of took part, you were, you were here, uh, you tested the water. Can you take us through kind of the timeline of what happened and the miracle that, that really brought this to life? Yeah, it's chilling the way you say it. It really could have been, it, it could be a really cool episode of one of those CSI shows because the way it happened, it was a series of miracles. Uh, this child shows, Mimi shows up. She's one of the first kids that shows up at Children's Hospital of Orange County. And it's a miracle that the doctor that was on call that weekend was a pediatric infectious disease expert with a lot of training. She said it was the worst infection she'd ever seen. And she tried all the normal antibiotics, like Kelly said, and none of them worked. And eventually she got in touch with the CDC who said, try this one used for leprosy. Um, Another miracle, two weeks later or three weeks later, a second child shows up at Children's Hospital. The same doctor happens to be on call on another weekend, sees the two, puts them together. She was the one that was able to put this, this doctor that was on call, she put it together. She saw the causation. She figured out that they'd been to the dentist. They, and they learned that it had been to the same dentist. Uh, and we, uh, and that's when we got involved. The Orange County, they, they, just, they discovered there was an outbreak in a, of infections. 
they called us and asked us what type of testing we do and do we do R2A testing when we said yes they said okay you're going to test their water at these places to, and, we'll, and let's keep going on it and so we, they got we did and then it was on the news uh, it was on NPR and the more kids showed up at the ER the more it was on the news and the more it was on the news the more kids showed up at the ER and it got and so there's a website up from Orange County we'd go to every week and see how many kids were sick it was 20 it was on NPR when it was 40 it was on the low I saw it on national TV a couple of times but when it got to be 71 kids they shut down the website because I don't know maybe because of the lawsuit started happening but there were 71 kids that we knew about uh, 99 percent of them required hospitalization and, a, and at least one surgery and here's the scariest number of all i think it's not so much the 85 days before the symptoms present that was the average or that was the median but up to 409 days so imagine it's your son or daughter or grandson or daughter get sick with an infection you don't know what it is can't figure it out go to the er the er people say to go to the dentist you're going to say no we haven't been to the dentist in over a year so it could happen so it's really hard to uh, find causation for these kinds of things. And that makes these things particularly tough. Um, but the lawsuits are ongoing. Uh, you know, uh, COVID put a delay on the trial that was supposed to start, but uh, they, will, they will start it. Oh, the other, yeah, go ahead, that's fine. Um, we, we expect, uh, we expect uh, several, uh, bad news stories to hit when the trial, when, when these things go to trial. And there was another one in Atlanta that happened the year before, but we've heard from inside insiders on that. They tell us they're waiting for the Anaheim trial to be completed because they're expecting a huge verdict, of course. Right? So it'll be- And Pearl Wedge gets calls every few months. Um, Kelly, I know that you had a, a call not too long ago um, and, and these calls or, you know, these situations don't always end up on the news. Um, so it's, it's hard to know if, you know, that this stuff really happens and it, and it does, it may not be as big of a case as the Anaheim or Atlanta case. Um, maybe not that many people, but it, it still happens and we still get, get calls, um, every few months, um, of Dennis, um, asking, you know, what do I do? Um, and, uh, so just to make that you guys more aware. So we know that we, we talked about the why, how does bacteria grow so well in dental unit water lines? Um, Kelly, do you want to take us through that? Yeah, so we'll just kind of, kind of briefly go over the science of it. But, um, and I know someone asked what bacterium she had. She had the microbacterium abscessus. Uh, it's that slow growing bacterium um, that, that, that grows really well in pathogenic, in, in, the, in the biofilm, it's a pathogenic bacteria. Um, uh, so yeah, so even in, in pre-COVID or we, now that you guys are back to working uh, all the time, even in the busiest offices, dental unit water lines are less like this, like a river, and they're more like this, like a pond. And you know, I hate to, to um, to look at this picture of this pond and say, oh my goodness, I am not squirting pond water into my patient's mouth. Like that's just not what our water looks like. That's not at all. And, and the fact of the matter is in all reality, we only use our air water syringe 10 seconds here, 10 seconds there. And so water sits stagnant for long periods of time at room temperature um, in your dental unit water lines. And plus the water lines are super, super small. So they create the perfect place for bacterial growth and development. Um, I like to use the analogy of a dandelion. Um, what happens when you blow in a dandelion? The seeds kind of disperse and go kind of all, all throughout, right? And then what happens? They start to grow up all around. Um, I know in the spring and the summer, you see dandelions everywhere and they, and they grow up really quickly. Uh, the same thing with biofilm. Um, bacteria will start to grow. It'll, it'll, you know, it'll attach to the small tube of the, of the water lines. And once it starts to grow, it really starts to grow. And then that biofilm develops. And then when you use your air water syringe, some of that bacteria can break off and slough off. And it just goes downstream until you stop using that air water syringe, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it might be. Um, and then it just stops. And then that bacteria will, will grab onto the line again. And then that regrowth happens all over again. Um, and biofilm is stubborn. It's thick, it's sticky. Carly, tell us a little bit more about, about biofilm. 
Yeah, so um, there was a study done. Um, it was it's called the Barbo, Barbo study, and basically in brand new dental unit water lines, um, uh, for in within five days the bacteria count got all the way up to two hundred thousand colony forming units per milliliter, and that that was less than five days with brand new lines. Um, even with sterile water, if you put sterile water in your dental unit water bottle bacteria is still going to grow and it's going to go grow quickly. Um, again, those dental unit water lines are so tiny and they're, they sit stagnant a lot of the time um, and they're, they're room temperature. So it really serves as the perfect place for bacteria to grow. I like this little diagram here in the corner. Mike's really good at explaining that. Mike, do you want to tell us about this diagram here? Kelly and Carly love this slide. They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, Anyway, a bio, uh, you know, we all have jobs to do. Well, a biofilm's job is to go forth and multiply. To do that, it has to attach to a surface, and there's plenty of surface in a dental unit water line. Every drop of water's got plenty of room to spread out and get comfortable. And then the water sits stagnant for 23 and a half hours a day. So it allows them to get thicker and then to detach, and it detaches on purpose. And usually it goes downstream, but we've learned from the Barbo study and others that it can go, it can grow upstream. Um, but mostly it goes downstream. When it detaches, it becomes planktonic, free floating bacteria floats downstream, and then it does this again. And it reattaches, and the way we use water for three seconds at a time is really um, the per it's the perfect petri dish for, for biofilm, whose job is to go forth and multiply, right? That's and it does a good job. So we have to be good. We have to do a good job to, you know, to, to mitigate it. Exactly. Um, so we've talked about the why, we've talked about the how. Now let's talk about what we can do to be dental water compliant and, and provide safe water for our patients. Um, the most important thing is really just to know and understand the CDC guidelines. Um, the CDC put out a set of guidelines in 2003 and really these guidelines were set in place um, to protect your patients from infections and not only to protect your patients, but to protect your practice. Um, in the case of an infection or an inspection and audit, um, really being CDC compliant is what's gonna, gonna save your, your practice and your patients. Um, so at least 33 state dental boards right now have adopted the CDC guidelines as law. So if you see your state lit up in the light blue, um, your state does require um, following the CDC guidelines. Um, we, you know, if you're looking at this map, um, you notice that California is not light blue. Um, Kelly made a really good point about that. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I was looking at this and, and when you were talking last time, I'm like, wait a minute, California is not light blue, but they have the biggest lawsuit in, in dental history. And so just because it may not be a, 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 maybe it's just a recommendation or whatnot, if no matter what, you're still going to be liable. So it's just, it's just good practice. Um, and it's so important just to make sure that your patients and your practice are taken care of and to, to adhere to those CDC guidelines. And also Washington, Mike, you just, you have a, a you, you heard the, the newest on that. Can you go into a little bit on that real quick? Yeah, for our friends in Snohomish, Washington, they uh... Uh, two weeks ago today, the Washington Dental Board approved the language. So in January, you'll probably get some notification from your state dental board and from other places that they're going to require that the dental unit water lines, every dental water line be tested every 90 days uh, at, at minimum. You can do combined samples, but so we're going to have to change this map. We'll probably have to update that and make Washington its own color. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Washington is, is there now or almost there starting in 2021. Right. Um, and, and we're, we're sure that um, more states are gonna follow um, in yeah. those footsteps. So um, really one day it, it may be required, but um, yeah, you can refer to this map to see where your state's at. And so uh, to understand the CDC guidelines, we've kind of uh, split it up into three different pillars for, for dental water quality. The first one being water for surgeries. Um, when you're doing any type of surgical or invasive procedure, uh, this is super important and Kelly will get into a little bit more detail about it, um, but you have to uh, use sterile water and you have to use a sterile delivery system. Um, 
Kelly, why don't you explain more what that means? Yeah, I, and I think you hit it right on the head. Uh, you got to use sterile water, but the key is from a sterile delivery system. So uh, the CDC put out, like you said, in 2003, they put out um, some guidelines as to what a surgical procedure is. So they are down there listed for you down here. You can also, if you need, if you want to copy this, we can definitely get this to, to you. Um, but these are all what surgical procedures are as defined by the CDC. And if you're doing any of these, it's really, really critical that you use sterile water and not only sterile water, but from a sterile source. Um, so using like a, a right here, we have a, a single use uh, disposable saline or sterile water uh, bag with the surgical handpiece. Uh, it's either autoclavable tubing or it's single use tubing. Um, and then they can auto, it's a surgical handpiece that you can autoclave the whole thing or using a um, like a bolt syringe or a big syringe with that's this uh, single use and using it from that sterile water. Uh, it's not just as easy as opening up a bottle of sterile water, pouring it, in, pouring it into your dental unit and then using it. Um, once you do that, once you pour it into that into your dental unit, it's no longer sterile. So really, really important that you do that. Um, recently, um, and, and this is another reason why. Mm -hmm. uh, Carly, can you can you explain about yeah. this, this lawsuit? Yeah, so this is exactly why um, we, it's why it's super, super important to use that sterile water with a sterile delivery system. Um, a dentist in New Jersey um, was in this situation and he wasn't using sterile water for these invasive procedures. Um, 15 patients ended up um, getting endocarditis. Um, and there was even one, one death from that. So um, it was on the news, but it was a little bit more recent. And so this dentist, um, you know, this was over $290,000 in penalty for him. And again, yeah, his license was suspended. So again, just um, really shows how important it is to use sterile, sterile water in a sterile delivery system for surgical procedures. Um, so the second pillar that we've kind of created is your dental unit water quality. Um, so according to the EPA, they have a standard for drinking water, and that is 500 colony forming units per milliliter or less. And there's a few ways that you can, you can do that. First being use independent water reservoirs or water bottles, having water bottles on your unit. That really gives you the control um, of, of the, the cleanliness of your water lines. Second is flush for 20 to 30 seconds in between patients. Uh, use a chemical treatment. So a tablet or a straw, that, that low level antimicrobial. And then uh, uh, shocking. Shocking is super important. Um, every now and then you want to go in with something strong, um, but we'll get in more, more into that later. Uh, so you may be thinking, well, I do all of those things. I, I, you know, I use independent water bottles and I flush. I use a daily treatment and I shock, uh, so I don't really have to test. And really that's, that's not the case. So you could be doing all of this and we see practices that, that do all of this and they test quarterly and still once in a while they'll get a fail. So that's why it's super, super important to test just to verify that your protocol is working and your treatment products are, are doing its job. Um, and not only water test results, but documentation of training and standard operating procedures, you really gotta have that verification of compliance. So again, these three things, water for surgeries, following these steps to keep your water um, at that 500 colony forming units uh, or less, and then keeping your verification of compliance, keeping your documents uh, ready in the case of an audit. So, um, you know, we've talked about so much so far, let's get straight to it. How, how can you do this to protect your, your practice and your patients? So we've come up with uh, the proven protocol we call it, and these are the three steps to safe water. Kelly, do you wanna tell us about that? Yeah, so these steps are gonna look very familiar. We went over them right at the beginning, but we'll kind of take a deeper dive now into kind of what they are. Um, so yeah, at ProEdge, we've been testing and treating water for uh, over 15 years. And we truly, truly, truly believe that if, if you follow these three steps, that you'll consistently get passing test results and have the, be and have the best, um, have good water all the time. Uh, so the first step to the three steps is to shock first. Uh, shocking is again using that strong chemical to clean the lines out. You want to do that before your uh, before treatment, um, once a quarter, 
And then of course, if you have a test that fails, you wanna shock uh, and then retest. Uh, the second is treatment. That's uh, step two is, is daily treatment or using a continuous product. So something that's meant, uh, designed to be continuously present in those water bottles all the time. So your tablets and your straws. And then step three, uh, like Carly was just talking about is your verification or your testing. Um, and that is gonna be your proof. That's gonna show that you that step one and step two are effective. And that's gonna be your CDC compliance. That's gonna show that your protocol is effective, that you meet the CDC guidelines and, um, and that everything is that you're good to go. It, it, it validates your protocol. So um, let's get into the first step. And I'm sure we've already said this word a hundred times and we'll, we'll keep saying it, um, but that is shocking. So shocking is going in with a strong disinfectant to clean out the lines. Um, so when we say something strong, we mean a diluted bleach solution. There's also a product called Liquid Ultra and that one's made by Crosstex. Um, that one has a really good reputation. Really these two protocols um, we see get the best results. We do, we have a video on um, showing you how to do the diluted bleach protocol with um, Kelly T and, and Kelly B who's not here today. They're super entertaining. So we do have that video. If you go to proedgedental.com slash shock. Another super important thing I just want to mention, um, you, you don't want to, your flush, you don't want your, those chemicals to go down your evacuation lines. Um, you want to flush those chemicals out into a cup or, or down the sink. Um, just never, never buy a evacuate your evacuation lines. So if you're using a straw treatment, um, like blue tube here, um, or Denip Denipir or Stericil, um, you can't put those chemicals through this straw either. And so that's why we have come up with a, a dummy straw. And that's specifically for practices that use these, um, these straw treatments. Um, they're super easy to use. All you do is twist off your filtered straw, put your dummy straw on. You can go ahead then and you're ready to shock. Once you're done, you can just twist off your dummy straw, put your, uh, your blue tube or whatever you're using back on, um, and then you're good to go. So again, we just don't want chemicals going through. Uh, your, if you have a straw treatment, that'll, that'll definitely ruin it. We don't want that. If you're using tablets, you're good to go. You already have a normal take-up tube in your line, so you don't need to worry about the dummy straw. You're already, you're good. You're ready to go and ready to shock. Um, so next, this is a, a fun topic, um, and I'll let Kelly explain that. But what if? Yeah, what thanks, if, thanks, Kelly. <laughs> I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> you can, everybody knows you can tell this is Kelly's favorite slide. My yeah. favorite, <laughs> my favorite topic. Uh, what if, yeah, probably out of all the consultations that I that I do all week, this is this is the least least fun. So don't hate me. Uh, if you're plumbed directly to your city water lines, you may have great city water. Not saying that you don't. Um, but in those little tiny water lines is where the problem lies. So if you're, if you're hooked up to directly to city water and you don't have a water bottle, don't hate me, but we recommend retrofitting with a water bottle. That way you do have control over the water. So you, you can still use the, the tap water. We, we in fact like using tap water, um, but you have control over the water that's going into your patient's mouth and you can clean those lines. Without having that water bottle there, there's no effective way to shock those lines. Uh, so retrofitting is absolutely necessary. Uh, there are also um, inline cartridges. So Dentapure makes one, Stericil makes one. Um, th those are okay, those, those are good products. However, we still recommend retrofitting. So you can not you can shock because we know that shocking is the key to water line maintenance. Um, without using that strong chemical, there's really no way to get that, that wormy, that stuff that we saw earlier, that brown kind of wormy and someone had asked what that was, that is a biofilm. And so you need something strong to clean that out of there. Um, and so we, we really recommend having that water bottle there um, if you have either, if you're using a cartridge or if you're using even a centralized system, having that water bottle on your unit uh, will make things so much easier. You can get clean, clean lines in 10 minutes. Um, I know you can shock with some of these, these systems. Um, but having that bottle right there on your unit makes things a lot easier. So again, don't hate me, don't kill the messenger, but we do recommend retrofitting if you, um, if you don't have water bottles. And you can contact your dental supply company. They'll be able, or a technician there will be able to help you out with that. Um, it's really, really worth it in the end. So um, really worth it, we highly recommend. 
Um, step two is to treat. Mike, why don't you take us through um, step two uh, of this, uh, the proven protocol? Right, well, and we can't, you know, you can't, um, you know, it's, you, can, you can't over, overstate uh, the need to shock your water lines regularly. That's, that's why we say, you know, the protocol is to shock, to treat, and to test. Uh, in the most comprehensive study that's ever been published, it was by John Molinari and Nancy Dewhurst in Compendium about two years ago. Um, they looked at 22,000 water tests from several labs, including Loma Linda University and ours, and, um, and analyzed all the results. And they showed that in the real world, dental water lines fail 31% of the time. So a 69% pass rate is nothing to post on your Facebook page. Right, I don't think, but or, <laughs> but um, but it's but it's true. So uh, there, the, all these products out there, they they are good, and if you do follow the instructions for use and shock often enough, you get great results. Um, because you know when we say shock, you got to use that strong chemical. I see Kent McCauley asked the question: Can we shock with three percent hydrogen peroxide? Uh, the answer is yeah, you can, yes, you can. We, we suggest you dilute it down to 2%. Um, it's nice because it's got, uh, you know, it's non-toxic, but it's super corrosive <laughs> to equipment, which is kind of wild. We, you know, it kind of goes against your instincts. So you can shock with that and we can dive into more of that later during the Q&A. But uh, real quick, all these products, tablets and straws, they're good, they're not perfect, but you got to shock and you got to shock maybe more often than you think. And that's why you test just to make sure that you know uh, that, your, that your protocol is working. They're good, but they're not perfect. And really it's because, so think of it this way, the low level antimicrobials, Kelly, tell us a little bit about, about the low level antimicrobials and why we need to shock. Sure, yeah, so, um, so here we have the low level antimicrobials. Um, go back one more slide, Carly, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, no, you're good. Um, so the low level antimicrobials, the tablet and the straw, up against this biofilm. And I just wanted to just point this out because a lot of the times, if you, sell, if you saw this, this biofilm, this thick of a biofilm, and these are recent pictures that we just got in, um, you would know you have a problem, right? But most of the time, a, a lot of the time, we'll get samples in and the water looks crystal clear. Probably not this crystal clear as that ice, the water from Iceland that someone was talking about. Earlier. <laughs> but we get water that looks really, really clear. And when we test it, it has over 100,000 colony forming units of bacteria. So it just kind of goes to the science of how um, low, low an antimicrobials work against biofilm. And so this next slide here, the, the, little, the little soldier here with the, the uh, sword and shield is representative of a low level antimicrobial. And you can, you can tell that against low levels of bacteria or against you know, bacteria here and there, it can hold its own. A bacteria is constantly reinforced with the air, um, how we went over how the water line sits stagnant at room temperature. So bacteria just really has a chance to grow in those little tiny water lines. And so it overtakes that low level antimicrobial. And so shocking becomes necessary. And again, one more time here, we're gonna say, <laughs> not what, there, there's gonna be more times we'll probably say it, this, yeah. but <laughs> shocking shock, becomes shock, shock. necessary. It truly is the key to water line maintenance. And so, and we know that we've, we've seen that um, with, with data, uh, and it's just necessary to, to, to get your lines clean. So then you can use those tablets or those straws, whatever you, whatever you choose to use to, to maintain the line. So there's shocking products, and then there's low-level antimicrobials that will maintain the line so you don't have to shock as often. If you don't use a low-level antimicrobial, you need to shock once a week, and that is uh, pain in the neck. So, uh, yeah. So this is a really cool analogy that I like. Um, Think of your, think of brushing your teeth every day as your low level antimicrobial. And then think of shocking as your um, a six month cleaning. Um, you wouldn't tell your patient, oh, you brush every day. So you, you don't need to come in for your, your checkup or your, your cleaning. Um, and that's not the case. You want both. You want to still brush your teeth every day, just like you still want to go um, into, into every six months to get your teeth cleaned. Um, you want to use your daily treatment daily and go in every now and then and shock your water lines. So our step three is to test. Um, Kelly, why don't you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so um, testing is just going to verify that that step one and step two are, are, are effective and that you meet that CDC compliance. 
And now also that, that interim guidelines that the CDC put out recently that Mike went over in the beginning, um, they do state in there to test prior to reopening your office. Now we're most offices are probably reopened. If you haven't tested, it's not too late. Let's go ahead and get that done. Um, and, and so you can, so you're in line with this, what the CDC states. Uh, but the, again, that's your, that's your verification. That's kind of where, where the rubber meets the road. That's your proof. Uh, and you want to prove that you are meeting or exceeding what the CDC says. So that's that 500 colony forming units per milliliter or less. So drinking water standards. Um, and that's your verification. So let's talk about uh, frequency. Mike, you want to take us uh, through this? How, how often should we be testing? Well, we saw the map right, that showed the CDC recommendations and how they're changing. And we know some states are requiring quarterly testing. And that's the OSAP position paper came out that said uh, quarterly testing is, is what they recommend. And uh, the reason is quarterly is, an, we think, an appropriate interval that's easy for people to understand. When I say we, not me, smarter people, way smarter people than me have decided that quarterly testing is about is a, is a good interval for testing. You, you can't do it every day. You can't do it, you know, every week. Although, remember, we it took us a while, but now we test our autoclaves every week, and we don't think twice about it. We wouldn't stop testing our autoclave every week because we don't want to wait. We don't want to worry that how long have we been having unsterile instruments, or how long has our been wa how long has our water been uh, less than less than safe. So OSEP recommends the mo monitoring performed periodically in the absence of uh, manufacturer's instructions for use. And a lot of manufacturers like ADEX says, test monthly, then quarterly, and Forest and Dentally say monthly and quarterly. Here's one of the reasons why uh, these people are saying quarterly testing works. Because the people who test quarterly, they just don't fail, do they, Carly? They really, uh, they, uh, they pass 95% of the time. These are, this is unpublished data from our, from our internal uh, information. And 95% um, pass rate is perfect. It's just about perfect. It's hard to get any better than that. You know, with staff turnover and, and just the nature of dental water lines, 95% is perfect. So if you test every quarter, you can sleep good knowing that you're passing, you know, 95% of the time and you're failing one fifth as often as people who test less than quarterly, your average guy. And the other thing um, is pretty cool, I think, is that testers who test with us or just test regularly, they get better fast, right? They get quicker. Mm -hmm. And that's what this yeah, chart yeah. shows. This was from the uh, Molinari Dewhurst article. So this is published information. So you, the first time, if it's going to be your first time testing, um, you may not do the best. You may not um, get a, a perfect passing test. Um, and that's really, really common. But the more you test and the more um, time you take to develop your protocol and your, your treatments, the better you'll get. And that just, yeah, it just shows from, from the data that we have here. Um, so uh, what kind of testing methods are out there? Uh, Kelly, do you wanna tell us about those, those methods? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple different options uh, now that are available. Um, there's the, the mail-in testing that you can do, um, which will give you that third-party verification that's really important that you can hang on to. Um, and then there's uh, the R2A, or that's that's one of the uh, the uh, that's the gold standard for water line testing right now. It's the uh, R2A testing method, where actually you, you put the water on auger plates and then it it grows and then we, we count the colonies. Um, that'll give you a precise colony forming unit count. Um, some tests come with overnight shipping included, and some don't. So you want to just make sure with the lab that you're testing with, does it come with overnight shipping, and make sure that you know that um, and counter that into the cost. Um, and then you'll have that third party report emailed to you and you can get the results uh, depending on the type of testing that you do within one to seven days. Um, and then we also, there's also an in-office testing method. Um, those are kind of, those are, those are here, the, the blue and the red paddle, the in-office testing. And the cool thing about those are they're 100% they're confidential. So you can do them in the privacy of your own office. Um, they are more economical, so you can test more often and it's, and it's, it's a cheaper way to test. Um, if you do test with the in-office test, OSEP does recommend that you test more often. Um, and also just to let you know, you're not gonna get a precise colony forming unit count like you would with the, the mail-in test. However, you're gonna know where you're at. You're gonna know, hey, I'm passing or I'm, or I'm not, or I need to take some corrective action. So you will know that. It's just not gonna give you that precise number. And with the in-office test, you, you get your results back in uh, two to seven days. Um, 
and we also have another option to save because we want to get people testing no matter what you, no matter what method you use um and there's another way to save money and how, how can you do that curly yeah so um taking pooled or combined samples is taking an equal amount of water from your air water syringe your hand piece your scaler and putting it all into one vial um, or one paddle test that you can see on the picture putting it all into the same vial um, that way you're able to test all of the lines. Um, you need to remember, you, you can mix them together if they come from the same dental unit. Um, but again, this allows you to test every single line, every quarter, and it's not going to break the bank. Doesn't makes it so you don't have to separate out every individual line. Um, there were some um, kind of concerns that uh, pooled samples, uh, you know, uh, uh, have false negatives involved, but really uh, based on our data, we found that that's just not the case. Uh, pooled samples is a really good way to test um, because you do want to test every single line. You don't want to skip one. Um, you want to test everything. So it's finally, uh, it's official. You can all be uh, Yay, go, certified and <laughs> can be nerds just like all of us in dental unit water lines. Um, so to get your CE credit, you can go to cezoom.com slash login log into your account, click the green verify button on the course and type in the code ProEdge2020. So you have five days to, to go in and verify and get your CE credit. So take a picture of this. Um, we can revisit the slide, but um, five days to verify, you can go get your, your CE credit. And if you have any um, questions, you can always uh, contact support at cezoom.com. Um, again, this is the end of the CE portion. Um, you can stick around till the end. We're going to give out uh, that free gift. Um, but first, we just want to go over um, some things that we have um, to offer your practice. So what do we have to offer? Uh, Kelly, why don't you tell us about our, our R2A testing? Yeah, so ProEdge, we have a couple of different mail-in testing options. The first one we have is that R2A testing method that I was kind of talking about earlier. Um, and that is currently the gold standard uh, testing method for, uh, for dental unit water lines now. Um, it does give you that third party verification. We do give you an emailed uh, test result within and seven days after we receive it. Uh, any R2A testing method that you get from ProEdge, um, is, it does come with overnight shipping included, which is super, super helpful, especially right now at this time um, with, with COVID and with extra surcharges and, and, and things get the, our, our test kits come with shipping included. Um, and then we email you that report. So you have that third party verification. We also have a subscription option with our R2A testing kits, um, as well as with our, our, the next test that Carly will talk about. But the subscription op option basically just takes the worry of testing off of your shoulder and puts it on ours. We will just order your test kits for you every three months. Um, we do sell through distributors, so we don't sell anything direct, but we just take that worry off of your shoulders. Uh, we, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a ton of things to worry about in the whole realm of infection control. Water lines get often, oftentimes gets overlooked. It's easy to overlook because there's so much to do. So let us, let us worry about that for you. Sign up for that subscription program. It's, it's free. Uh, you can cancel at any time. And then we will just order those kits. You'll know when it, when it gets there that you can, uh, that it's time to test. Uh, and, and then we have a brand new Carly. Yes. Yeah, super, super exciting. Um, we have a brand new um, testing method and it is called the flow, flow mail and water testing. Um, it uses a uh, flow cytometry and basically that, that flow cytometry is used or so flow cytometer is used in cancer research, cell analysis and or antibiotic testing. So it's really, really the most advanced test available. And the coolest part about it is you'll get same day results. So once we get in your, your test kit in, we'll process your samples and we'll send out your results to you that same day. Again, we'll email a report to you and I'll show you what those reports look like. The one on the left you can see is for flow and the one on the right is for the R2A testing. testing. Um, not, not much different, but both of them still have that, that green, yellow and red indicators to, to make it easy for, for you to read. Um, but yeah, we'll send these straight to your email um, so you have that verification third-party verification. Um, Mike, why don't you tell us about our in-office test? Oh yeah, quick pass is kind of cool because it's designed for dentistry. 
right? We've, yeah. got, we've got a neutralizer in there so that whatever you're using, that low level antimicrobial, whether it's blue tab or blue tube or denipur, stericil, citrusil, ICX, it will neutralize those things. So they're not killing the bugs during the two to three days of the incubation. When we say incubation, it incubates at room temperature. So it's super easy. We also put a dye in there. So when the bugs grow, they turn red on a white background. It's just a lot easier to read than the previous red petal that grew gray on gray. So, um, but you get your results in two to three days. Um, if you, you know, if you, if it's, if there's any red at all, it's probably time to shock. And I think Kelly and Carly, you guys had this idea that if there's a lot of red, you might want to shock twice. And if there's mm -hmm. a whole lot of red, you might want yeah. to shock twice. Uh, yeah, time. exactly. I love that. That's fun. Um, and this is my favorite thing is that everybody's got, a, I see Susie Daltz on the call. That's super cool. Hi to Susie and all of her students. And uh, when you do a training class, uh, sometimes the, the, the trainer will leave behind a log and you can put all your training materials in it. You can put your autoclave test records in it. Well, now you can put your water test records in it. You can three hole punch this, put it in your three ring binder and sleep good at night because we know we, our phone rings. People say, I need my water test results because I'm getting inspected. So inspectors look for this. So yeah. get this and sleep good at night. It's kind of the same as the, the mail-in results, except mm -hmm. you're doing it yourself. And then we have our, our maintenance uh, treatment, Blue Tab. Blue Tab is just a tablet that you drop in the bottle. Every time you refill it, it's meant to be in the lines overnight and over the weekend. So you don't need to purge your lines at the end of the day. That that tablet, or blue tab, is actively going to keep those bacteria levels low um, in between shocking and, and while you're away from the office. Um, we won it uh, fourth time Dental Townie Award winner, so that was super exciting. Um, but yeah, we also have a new treatment product. Uh, Kelly, why don't you tell us about Blue Tube? Yeah, Blue Tube, super excited, man. Um, it's, we love the idea of the straw and we've, we've been wanting, we've been wanting to come out with them. We've been, we've been, you know, developing it for, for several years, but we wanted to perfect it and really stand behind it. And we do, we 100%, 100%, 100 stand behind uh, blue tube. Um, it is a straw treatment. So it's similar to the, the Dentapir, the, the Q-Free product, the Stericil. Um, however, ours is a two cartridge system because we, again, want to, can't stress the importance of that, sh the shocking, how important shocking is. And so ours, you'll see the box here does come with two. So you get the full year's worth of, of, of product. However, it, we break it up into two six month cartridges. Um, it is non-toxic, non-allergenic, non-corrosive, and it does treat your, treat your lines for a year. But at the six month mark, um, we, we recommend shocking because it's so, so important. And we know that. And with the but the other straws, we loved it. We love the convenience of it, you know, not having to add a tablet, although we love blue tab, but we love the convenience of it and convenience of it. And so, um, but we also kind of saw, saw that at that six month mark, it was kind of results were starting to taper down. And so um, love, we just, we came out with ours with two uh, cartridges and uh, comes along with the dummy straw. So you can shock at that six month mark. It also has a chemical indicator not the most important thing, but it is super kind of cool. You can put it on your bottle, you push it, and it lets you know when it is six months is up and time to change your straw out. Um, really That's excited my about part. Blue Yeah. My favorite part is the, the chemical time indicator. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I like it. Um, if you go to our YouTube channel, um, you just go to proedgedental.com slash YouTube, and we have a ton of uh, resources on there. We have videos on how to use um, each of our products, um, just the science behind all the products. And I know, Mike, you have a, a bunch of educational videos on there where you, you, you talk to a bunch of experts. So go to our YouTube channel and watch our videos. They're, they're super entertaining, especially uh, Kelly T and Kelly uh, B. Look at my facial expression there. I mean, just that alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go watch them. They're, they're awesome. And then we, we do offer, um, consultations. Kelly, can you tell us more about those? Yeah, this is, uh, this is, you know, this is really I, what put, per, what, what puts ProEdge just above everything, above all the other labs out there, in, in my opinion. We offer complimentary, complimentary consultations, no matter what product you're using, even if you don't test with us, and if you get failing test results, you can always call us, and we want to help you get passing results. 
Uh, you don't have to be using our products either. You can be using something else. We have tips and tricks to help you use your products um, the best and more the most uh, uh, effectively and efficiently. Now, if you talk to Mike, he might try to sell you something. He's in sales. Uh, Carly and I, <laughs> just kidding. But Carly, <laughs> just kidding. We all we all want to to help you get the the best results uh, possible. Um, and we, uh, we truly believe we don't want another Mimi Morales situation to happen. We don't want any other dental professional to get sick. And so that is where uh, the, the true passion comes in with ProEdge. We want to help your team be successful and we have complimentary consultations to help you be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll most likely t speak to, to Kelly or myself, but we'll, uh, we'll answer all your questions. We wanna get to know your practice. So give us a call anytime. Um, so um, what you guys have been waiting for, uh, we want to give you, got, you all a, a free four pack of our in-office test quick pass. Um, so each registered attendee can visit prowedgedental.com slash live webinar, enter the password in this together, all lowercase, no spaces, um, submit that form. And once we get it, we'll, uh, we'll send out a free four pack to you. Um, take a picture of this too, if you need, if you have any questions about this one, you can always um, contact ProEdge and, and we'll get you your free four pack.